turn that blank page into more of a comprehensive plan. Hello everyone, it is time for another instalment of my thesis writing. Finally, I mean, when was the last one out? Like a month ago, maybe? And that was when I was doing my figures and like trying to finish them off before doing my next video, which will be on the literature review. And that is where we are now. And that is what I will be talking about today. I thought what I would share with you all is how to start such a mammoth task. What a literature review for a PhD is, is you essentially condensing and describing all of the research around your topic into a concise 10,000 words piece of writing. Mm. It can be anywhere from 5,000 to probably 15,000 words, but you have to basically have a bird's eye view of your entire field, write that in a cohesive way and make sure you cover everything so that your examiners who read your thesis eventually are able to completely contextualize your work. It is not an easy process. It is very challenging to get that overview of such a broad field, but also pick out the fine details that are super important to your work. So I'm now like three weeks into my literature review, I'd say, well, two weeks, two weeks. I had a really pleasant surprise actually, because I went to start my review of all the literature for my thesis. I opened up a document that I'd made in September and I'd actually already written over 4,000 words. Like well done past Julia, because I had completely forgotten that I'd even written that. So I got to start the lit review with like a good foundation already laid out. So I thought I'd give a few tips on how I got that backbone of my literature review down. So without further ado, let me start laying down those tips. So weird. I thought for this video, I would make an example thesis title. And from there, I can give, you know, some examples of how I would go about dissecting this to get that layout for the introduction. So the title that I came up with was, Describe the impact that cute animal videos of sausage dogs have on well-being. You can tell that I'm watching too much TikTok at the minute because I'm obsessed with animal videos even more so than usual. So once you have your title, the first thing you need to ask yourself is what does the reader need to know in order to understand your work? Now you know a lot about sausage dogs. You know a lot about well-being because you have studied it for three years. But the examiner might not necessarily have that background and not even an examiner if someone else wanted to ever pick up your thesis. It might happen, you never know. You would want to give them a really clear guided introduction to your subject areas so they can fully understand your data and your interpretations. So with our title, what does the reader need to know? The reader needs to know the history of cute animal videos. They need to to know about sausage dogs in particular and how they have been used in videos. And then they also need to know about well-being. So we've got our three sort of main topics here of sausage dogs, animal videos and well-being. And from these big main topics, I would say these are your main headings throughout your introduction. In a regular thesis, you would probably have more than three. I think for my big headings, I have six or seven. So I'm introducing introducing the reader to six or seven distinct topics which they need to have a good grasp on to be able to understand my work. But for this example, we have three. We have our sausage dogs, our cute animal videos and our well-being. So now once you've got them, the second thing for you to do is to go into detail under each of these headings. And for me, the way I do this is I get a Word document, I write my headings in, and then I make a bullet point list underneath each heading of all of the little details people will need to know. So in terms of cute animal videos, the first thing I would put under there is the history of animal videos. And you could start 
start back with the 1990s show, You've Been Framed, where people used to film their pets doing silly things and send it into the telly, all the way up to the modern day of using TikTok and Instagram to document funny animals. So you could go through the different social media platforms, have a paragraph for each of those. Basically, you just wanna get all the details in about the history of cute animal videos and the most recent up-to-date research using cute animal videos. The next section, we have sausage dogs so in that I'd go into maybe like a biological thing like what are sausage dogs how have they come to be a bit more scientific there and then we could go into how sausage dogs are portrayed in the media you know you could pull up really popular photos and videos and compare studies of how many hits a sausage dog video gets to a non-sausage dog video and then the last section we have here is well-being so for well-being I would again go into what is well-being what is the actual definition and what things can help towards well being in general and then you can go more specifically into any research that has linked well-being and cute animal videos so yes this is a bit of a funny example but it's basically just take your headings underneath each one make a list of all of the details that the reader will need to know and in terms of detail here I don't mean write full paragraphs I mean write a phrase or a sentence and then move on to the next one you're just trying to get down on paper all of the things you think your examiner or reader will have to fully understand so they get your work and these will then form your subheadings so once you have your headings and your subheadings the next thing that I do is go and find a good review you cannot beat a good review for most dissertations or theses you will need multiple reviews to cover all of your topics but what a review is is someone else in the field that you're working in has already condensed the majority of the literature under their question into a nice compact review and what you can get from the review which is amazing is a list of relevant references. So with your lit review, you don't wanna just copy someone else's review because that's plagiarism and it's more than likely not going to be 100% relevant to your work. But what I like to do from a review is read it, find the references in there that do relate to my work, and then I will read them references separately. But it's already compiled a lot of the key references that you will need for your writing. So with our subject here, you could try and find a review on the impact of cute animal videos on well-being. And that will summarise, hopefully, the majority of the the literature so far on that subject. The more recent the review the better because obviously then it will have almost all the papers that you will need but don't worry too much if the review is a few years old because you really do need those more historical references for your writing. Once you've read your review and you found you know a great list of references what I would then do is assign these references to your different subheadings. You could think oh there's a really relevant reference there which talks about sausage dogs on Instagram so I'm going to pop that on under my Instagram section, instead of just having a massive list of references, assign them and reorder them so they fit under your different subheadings. After you've organized these references, I then go to Google Scholar or PubMed and look for keywords around my topic. And this will then hopefully pull up the most recent papers that weren't in the review or papers that the review didn't cover. And again, what you can do here is don't read the full reference right now because that takes a lot of time. I would say this is more just have a quick glance over the abstract and see do you think it's relevant do you think it's not if you're teetering towards yes it is put it into your list so again you can look through Google Scholar PubMed pull out references and organize them under your subheadings so what you've ended up with here is a document with headings in subheadings and then a list of organized relevant references now obviously this list is an exclusive you can continue to add in research if you find it when you're reading papers but it's really good to start with a great bank of references because what that does is it guides your writing the next thing to do really is to start writing and this can be you know a bit of a scary thing but my advice is to take it 
one section at a time. I know some people prefer to, you know, read all the papers and then start writing. But during a PhD, you will find that even though you're pulling in lots of references into this document, you will have probably already read a fair few of them throughout your research. So I will personally read the papers from one section and add them in and really focus and get down to the detail on that particular subject. It just keeps me focused, it's what I prefer. If I'm just reading loads of different papers, I find it a bit harder to process. But yeah, so from this video, you should now be able to make this Word document of your headings, subheadings, and organized references to really get a good plan together before you start writing your lit review. In some of my next videos on the lit review area, I will be talking about how I actually read and organize my notes around these references because, you know, you make a lot of notes and a lot of them can get lost very easily. Easily. I have a system, of course, because I am crazy organized. But yes, I do have a system that I would love to share with you all. I'm also going to do some videos on how to keep focused when writing such a dense piece of work. That is it from me today. I hope this video has helped you turn that blank page into more of a comprehensive plan. Once you've done that, you're ready to write. If you're enjoying these videos about my thesis, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. I will be posting more on there. If you have any questions for me, comment below or you can catch me on social media as always my dms are open but good luck with your writing i definitely need luck with mine and i will catch you next time mm -hmm.